Okay, so today we pressure washed this truck. It was filthy from the raccoons that were all over this thing. It was so nasty, but I pressure washed it. It got really clean, got all that bad stuff knocked off. And the truck runs pretty good. It needs some tuning and this and that. You can hear it when it was coming in. It was kind of struggling a little bit, but I can go through that. Today, we're gonna to go through changing a belt we're going to go through fixing the water pump and the water return pipes that come off the top of the cylinder heads. They're like collection tubes and those are cracked. I think someone left water in this truck and unfortunately it might have cracked some of these um, brass and aluminum pieces that are on the engine. So we're going to go over that today and see if we can get that fixed. Okay, so we're gonna try to take this water return here. This is a water collector and the water coming out of the cylinder banks here for number one, number two cylinder. Same thing with three and four, five and six. They each have one of these collectors and the water comes up and goes returns back to the radiator. So we're gonna try to take this. Uh, there's no water in here right now because it can't hold any water. I'll actually show you this little crack here. Actually, it's a big crack. You can see right along the bottom, it cracked all the way, about maybe a third of the way around. So we're gonna fix that. And it's got a little bit of a crack on that one, not too bad. And then I think the back one might be okay. All right, let's see here. These, uh, I wanna talk about these uh, bolts, these screws here uh, for a minute. These are Philister head, uh, Philister head screws. And they are a, an oddball railroad thread or custom made thread. They are not quarter 20. And I found that out working on another one and these are not gonna come out very easily. Wow. This is a uh, burns matic torch with map gas and I use this in the shop all the time I highly recommend getting one of these and get the one with the trigger here and this adjuster here you can adjust the flame the they make them without this adjuster and uh, they're not as effective this thing really opens it up wide and you can really uh, heat something up uh, a lot with this with this tool I've had this in a previous video on top five shop tools I'm going to be doing a second installment of that pretty soon on five more shop tools and um, so keep uh, keep an eye out for that on future videos Let's see what that does. Hopefully enough heat got in there. Another thing with this too, when you're heating something like this, you want to, sometimes you have to let it, let it sit and the heat has to soak from one end of the screw down. Like this is a blind hole, so I can't get the heat down at the thread. So I'm hoping that the heat comes down through the head of this screw down here, inside here. When you're restoring something like this, you can't you can't buy this. So you gotta you gotta make sure you take great care of removing this and and you know to fix it and put it back. So it takes a lot more time to do this than it would be to, on a normal truck where you just cut it off and go to your friendly auto parts store and just get a get another part. You can't do that. They don't have this at uh, Napa. All right, let's get this out of the way. Get this guy out of the way. Yeah, these hoses, these hoses surprisingly are, 
in decent shape. Someone must have replaced these hoses, you know, in the last 30 years or so, 40 years. They're definitely not originals. A lot of these trucks I get in here, the hoses are still original from the 1930s and 1920s, believe it or not, and it still works. Um, but yeah, this one's not, uh, not gonna be that case. I'm going to put a, uh, a link in the description to that burns matic torch before and also um, this is a, a Cornwell um, uh, cotter pin tool. I bought one of these years ago when I worked for Detroit Diesel and the, the end here, I never really used it for cotter pins, I do once in a while, but it really works well for taking rubber hoses off from a radiator. You can hook this thing inside. If you saw me a minute ago, I tried to use this screwdriver and I slipped and almost hurt myself on the spark plug. So this thing works a lot better. It gets in here and it goes around, it kind of keeps itself in there and you can break that corrosion. And then that hose is, I can feel it moving around. So I just got to take the other, the other one off here. Put this in here. And hopefully this comes off. Here it goes. Pull in the center, pops right off. Let's try this one here. This one's already loose, so I don't need the tool. Look at that dust coming out. that off there. Now back to these screws. Let's see if this thing moves. Oh, man. It's so it's in there so hard I'm actually gonna twist the tip of the screwdriver on this thing. I have a lot of strength and it's just gonna be I don't know this is gonna be a tough one. Gonna have to flop the hood back and uh, see if I can get in here a little bit better. One disadvantage of an accordion hood, you can only open one side at a time. This truck has got a wide center so you can open both together, yes, and, and hook them here on the radiator where they're supposed to go, but certain jobs you gotta flop one side closed and the other side open. That's why they got rid of accordion hoods. All right, so since I'm uh, fooling with these cooling passages here, there's a tray uh, you can see right here, and this tray is a spark plug tray and all the spark plug wires come from the distributor and also the magneto here on this one. They go through this tube into this tray and they get distributed out to each cylinder. So these wires are really bad. Um, they're, they're super dry and they need to come out. So I got to fool with this, so I'm going to take this off anyway. That looks like I can't get in here. Maybe. I'm going to get a different one. See what we got down here. Somebody's got a. Somebody's got a. This is a, a fireman bush fix here. Somebody's got a cotter pin in here instead of a bolt. It's supposed to have a screw in it. So the thread probably stripped out or something, and they put this in here.
There it goes. Okay, so there's like a, a chrome, a nickel plated or chrome plated tray here, and it covers up all the wires. Down here and check it out. You can see all the wires come up through that tube, and then they get distributed out amongst the different cylinders as it goes along. And then there's the tube down here for the magneto. Those sparkle wires weren't even on there. All right, that's been removed. Yeah, this thing's. Let's see. Pull these guys off. Gotta try to take this magneto cover off because all the wires come out of the cap here boy this thing's been on here a while we got the straps released I don't want to break this this cap There we go. Good, it came off. I forget what type of Magneto this is, which brand it is. I believe it's a Bosch. And on these, you have to be careful when you put this cap back on, not to damage anything in here. It goes on on a slight angle and then get cl clips in. Uh, if you're not careful with it, you can actually damage it and break this uh, break this cap. It's not not cheap to replace, but you can get them. All right, let's see, that's gonna help us there. Okay, now we got the distributor cap. I'll pop this. Get the back, back one, there it goes. All right. This guy's gonna come up. And All right, so we're clear. We're clear of that area there. Okay, good. No way, no way. All 
All right. Okay, so I've determined that these screws right here are not gonna come out. They're just seized really bad and they're probably gonna get replaced anyway. Even if some of them came out, they'd probably break. So uh, it's time to chisel them off. I've also had this in another video, this Makita right angle grinder. If you don't have one of these, you gotta get one because situations like this, you saw the air power, it was slow, doesn't really cut that great. This thing, it gets the job done and it's so it's so useful, uh, pretty much anything. And this brand is uh, really good. That's all the screws. Now I'd be very, very gentle with this.
There we go. Okay, I kind of thought this was gonna happen because that was cracked so badly. I was hoping it was gonna stay here and here, but uh, looks like we got a pretty, pretty bad case here. Let's see if I can fix it. All right, looks like this screw is going to come out. Now, this screw being a brass screw, it's going to help come out of this material. Yeah, if you have dissimilar materials of certain types, say this was aluminum and uh, steel, uh, not so much because aluminum reacts with steel and it makes a lot of really bad corrosion. And oftentimes you got to drill them out. It's nasty. Brass and cast iron, I found, are not too bad, but uh, these screws had a flathead drive on them. You can't get much torque on them, and when it's new, they work great, but when it's old, like this, uh, not so much. So we got to resort to this, but we'll get it. There we go. So I just wanted to talk to everybody about uh, threads for a minute. Um, I got a little close up here with the camera. So if you don't know anything about threads or how to tell how to measure a thread, I'm gonna show you now. 
Um, and if you're somebody that does know threads, you'll know that uh, threads like quarter 20 or 5 16 18, uh, those are standard threads, uh, all created by the U.S. Navy back in the 1800s. But um, without going into a crazy lesson here on this, um, if you're working on something like this and you want to find out what thread it is, you've got to check it with a thread gauge, which looks like this. And it has all these different things on here with the different number of teeth it's labeled, and they get coarser and finer. And you got to use this one for fractional, and there's one for metric. So if you're somebody that works on metric stuff, uh, you can get one of these. It's for metric screws. So on this screw here, I know this screw is not a standard screw. Now, looking at it right now, you might think it's a quarter 20 or something, but it's not. It's an oddball diameter and an oddball number of threads per inch. So um, to tell the diameter of a threaded rod or a screw like this, uh, this pertains to machine screws, not wood screws. You take your um, dial uh, caliper here, this is an electronic one, and make sure these are clean. Yep, and you're gonna measure the OD here just to touch the threads. And you, you don't wanna use the points here because they could go inside the thread and give you the wrong dimension. You wanna use the flat part of this here. And you go against the thread, just a light pressure. And this comes out to 259, 260 thousandths, which is uh, 250 thousandths is quarter inch. So this screw is an odd size. And if you want to find out what your, your decimal number turns into a fractional, what I do is just go, uh, you can use a converter online on, on your phone, or you can just, you know, um, divide out, uh, try to find the closest 30 second size this is. Um, and, and we'll do that in a few minutes. And then now we want to find out the threads per inch. So how many threads per inch? So I'm going to get the gauge here and find out what thread they used here. I'm going to go try 16. Nope, it's finer than that. So we'll go to 18. Okay, so I went and measured this thread here and I looked, I had to really do some research on this to find out what size this is. This turns out it's a number 16-22 screw. So it's not even a fractional marked screw. It's actually a number 16. Uh, if you are familiar with number eight, number six, number eight, number 10 screws, machine screws, well, they used to make number 14, 16 and up, uh, but this is a number 16-22 screw. So there's nowhere you're ever going to find this in a store or anything. So what we're going to do is drill these out to the next size up, which I believe is uh, 5 16 We're going to make them uh, 5 16 18, and nobody's going to know the difference. The head of the screw will be slightly bigger, but, uh, hey, it works rather than having to have a bunch of these made up custom machined, which would cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars, which is silly. So... We're just going to retrofit it to something that is standard. So anyway, American La France, the water outlets, these screws are not standard.
Check that out. That was in there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Look at that. It's amazing. Amazing how nice that comes out. All the tumbler. Gets all the corrosion on the inside. Works great. bad part about putting small parts in here you can't find them there we go got it
Okay, everybody, I have a really bad cold uh, today, so I'm not gonna be talking very much. I'm gonna be very brief with this, and then it's just gonna be the video going after. But these are the water outlets from my American La France course, and you can see how they're damaged here. They're cracked and broken. I'm gonna be trying to use this product today called Lab Metal. It's um, made by a company called Alvin. It's liquid aluminum in a can, and it's really kind of an interesting product. I've used it on a lot of intake manifolds and aluminum engine parts, water pumps, things like that, uh, that you can't get. You can't buy a new one. You need to make a small repair. Um, this stuff's really good. It, it, it's machinable when it dries. And it cures up in about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And it's like a aluminum paste in a can here, basically, as you can see. And um, so you add, you have a little solvent you put in there with it, and you make this... Um, this aluminum here goes on and it, it turns like solid aluminum when it's dry. So uh, it's a pretty unique product. Um, check it out if you need it, Alvin Lab Metal. Um, but we're going to go ahead and try this.
As you can see, <clears throat> this broke off when I was removing it. Need a different size nuts. I think somebody had a metric nut in here, metric bolt, I'm pretty sure, because that doesn't fit any of these American wrenches. Originally, I had thought that this piece here had the problem, and it's not so. It's the water pump itself, which really sucks, but We'll see if we can fix it. Someone's already made a repair here with fiberglass. It's actually not bad. Looks pretty good, I'm gonna leave it alone. I think this is a situation for JB Weld. It's gonna be the easiest thing to do. And it's gonna have some strength. Whereas the lab metal, it is strong, but this has gotta be, this is only two points, whereas the other piece has got eight points. So I wanna have something real strong here. Well, now we got to let this dry, and uh, we're going to let that dry overnight, and um, sand them down and uh, machine them and uh, put them back in the truck.
snapped it. Shoot. Snapped the screw. Darn. Didn't want to do that. Well, the tumbler just stopped. Let's go check the tumbler. Look at that. Amazing. Just to make a note, this cylinder bank, this this uh, cylinder head here compared to the other cylinders uh, was much cleaner inside. There's a lot less flaking in here and also the water um, supply that comes in down the bottom of the cylinder that you saw earlier when I was cleaning out, that one was um, pretty much empty of debris. So this cylinder here, I believe is uh, pretty good, but the other cylinders, um, need to be cleaned out. Technically, by rights, I should be taking all of these cylinders off, uh, you know, taking all the piston rings, you know, or leaving the pistons in the engine and removing this entire cylinder, uh, all three of them actually, and, uh, you know, really tearing it down and get all that rust out. But uh, I'm going to use a garden hose and try to flush it out manually and see what the flow is like. And uh, it should be okay for what I want to do for now. And we'll do that in another time, taking it apart. So um, I don't want to take apart a good running engine. So anyway, uh, all right, off to drilling and tapping. Okay, everybody. So because of time constraints, we got a lot to do on this, a lot of machining. We had some broken screws. I had to end up taking off all three of these water returns on top of the cylinders, as you've seen. And we're gonna have to make a part three video for this truck. Um, there's just been so many things we have to fix on the cooling system. I may have to take the radiator off, I'm not sure, but we've got some a lot of rust pieces and things inside the cylinder heads. We're gonna be cleaning out the cylinder heads. I'll show you how to do that and a bunch of other things. And then um, hopefully in the next video, we'll be able to have this running and driving take it for a ride so stay tuned subscribe and always remember keep that old iron running